Lecture 6.2, Image Characteristics. All lenses form images that are described by their characteristics. These are the type of image, the orientation of the image, the size of the image, and finally, its location. So we'll go through each of these. So the first one, that we'll look at is we're going to look at image type. And these are, you could either be a real or a virtual image. Real images are formed on the opposite side of the object. And remember, the object is also the source of light on the opposite side of the object, and they can be captured. So what I mean by captured is that you can project them. You can project them onto a screen. So again, let's look at what do I mean by this? So if I have a lens, let's say that this is my lens. So now if I have an object here, let's say that this is just a person, right? So here is my object. So what is my object doing here? It is sending rays in that direction. Light reflects and it, it does this. So now it's gonna go through a lens. So if it goes through here, then on this side, I can now place a screen. Okay. So this is going to be my screen. And what happens here is that if I can capture the image of this object, let's say it looks like this. Then the fact that I can project this onto a screen, right? So the image is captured slash projected on a screen. So what could be a screen? A piece of paper could be a screen. So what you're seeing here is that we have an image on the opposite side of an object. So that means our eye perceives the rays is originating from here. So for a real image, there is actual light at this location. 
a big deal, it turns out. It seems a little bit funny with the language. If there is actual light there and you can project it onto a screen, it's a real image. On the other hand, we can have virtual. And virtual images are formed on the same side of the object. And cannot be projected onto a screen. So think about that, right? So we're supposed to have a lens. Let's say this is my lens right here. And this time I have an object over here. And here's my object standing. But what I'm seeing here is that I'm gonna form an, even though the light, right? Even though the light is coming this way, our eye perceives an image on this side. So in other words, I may get an image that looks like this. It's on the same side as the object. But if I put a screen over here, let's say I have a screen right here. What you're going to see here on the screen, you're going to see that the screen does not focus the image. And that's because it cannot be projected onto the screen. So there's nothing. So right here at the spot, you have no image that is formed. So the question is, if this is what I'm saying is an image, we can ask the question, why can't an image be captured onto a screen? And the answer is that there is no light at this location. Now there is some light just because of the light source that's, that's doing there, but there's no light that originates at that point. So there's no light at this location, but our eyes are led to believe Mm -mm. to believe that light originates there. But because there's no light there, one can't project Project it onto the screen. So that's what we call a virtual image. Now let's go to the next one. So the second one here is we want to talk about the orientation. The orientation of the image. 
images are erect or inverted. Sometimes people say that they are um, upside up instead of upside down. So let's look at that. So the same thing as before. Let's imagine that I have my my lens right here. Right, here's my lens. And now I'm gonna have an object. So now what I'm gonna see here is that I'm gonna see this. So let's imagine in that this is my, my central axis, which is not central right here. So here's what we're gonna see. If I find an image, that's inverted like this. So an inverted image is a real image. That means that the only way, if you can capture the image, it has to be inverted. On the other hand, if you have an image that's erect, then we say that erect image, erect image is virtual. So just to make sure that we're clear on the language, all real images are inverted. All virtual images are erect. So then the third characteristics that we have to look at is we have to look at the image size. So this is the image size. And an image size can be either, the image size can be either smaller, it can be the same size, or it could be larger than the object. So let's write this out here. So here we go. So I have my lens again. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to, of course, have my object. So, of course, I'm going to have light that's coming from my source, the object. And now what's going to happen is that I'm going to form images here. And they come in three flavors. The first image is going to be it's going to be smaller. So this image is smaller. So if I compare that object to this image, we clearly see that it is smaller. On the other hand, if I have an object that looks like this here, so that looks like about two squares. So let's say that now I have an object that looks something like this here. And in this case, I'm gonna say that it's the same size 
as the object. So now, if I have a larger image, like this, these are the three possible sizes. So what's the notation that we have? We typically label that this is the height of the object. This right here is the height of the image, which I put a prime on there. So then if I look at my notation, so if I write H of object, then you know that this is the object height. And with the prime, and the word image, that tells me about the image height. So this is just for notation purpose. So now, how do you determine whether something is small or large? So we look at the ratio of image to object height. And this by definition, this is the magnitude of the magnification. which is typically defined as the absolute value of M. So here we go. So the absolute value of M is what we call the magnification, the absolute value of the magnification, and it's the image height divided by the object, which immediately tells us here is if the magnification is less than one, then that immediately tells us that it's smaller. If it's equal to one, then it's the same size. And if it's larger than one, then it's larger. That's how we define the magnification. And then finally, we have the image location. So four, this is the object, No, no, I'm sorry, That's I should not do that. This is called the image locations. And with the image location, it's going to tell us whether it's to the right or to the left of a lens. So the first thing that we should pay attention to is the sign convention. What is the sign convention for objects and images. So for a single end, so let's talk about the object distance first. So the object distance is defined by the symbol S. So for a single lens, the object distance S is always 
positive. In other words, S is always positive for a single lens. So in this case, here's what I'm seeing here. I have a lens right here. And so then I have my object. So now I'm going to be a little bit more careful here. So what you're seeing here is that on this side, this is where the object is. This is where it lives. So if I go and I look at my object, ooh, I just did that a little bit too much. Let me try that again. So if this is where my object lives, remember light has to refract. Then I'm, I'm looking at, here's my, my object. This distance we always call positive. So objects are always on the left side of a lens. If this is the case here, we call this a real object. So of course it begs the answer, are there virtual objects? The answer is yes, but only for a two lens system. So when we go to for two lens system, we'll talk about it then. So now that I have that sign convention, now let's look at the image location or the image yeah, location, which we defined here as S prime. So now, here we go. I'm going to start with my lens again. And here's what we know. What we know here is that real images are always on the opposite side. So real images are always on the opposite side of the object. So when we look at that space here, these guys are always here. But remember, we already said that real images are always inverted. So when I look at this thing, this tells me that in this space here, this is going to have S prime that's positive. So these are positive values. And that's what we mean. That's the sign convention for that. We also know that in this situation, that um, that if you're on this side, you're on the same side as the object here. Then these guys, uh oh, I think I, I'm going to have to lower this here or maybe raise this a little bit. I'm going to run out of space. 
Let me see if I can move this down a little bit. There we go. So now, if I look at this guy, I then say that virtual images are always on the same side as the object. So in this case, I'm going to form an image that's going to be on this side. But this side we call negative. In other words, we have negative values where image is on this side, which tells us then that S prime is less than zero.